What is up? This is a new episode of Top Tier Gaming Podcast, hosted by one and only Nocturnal Mantis and Leopactus1986. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, we were debating if we were going to do a live showing, but we weren't. Uh, we weren't advertising it. We weren't uh, throwing out billboards. Uh, we didn't have the strippers run out with uh, signs of our uh, <laughs> of our podcast. <laughs> Sandwich boards on the tits. Yeah, they're just them. spitting them and shit. And, oh, God. If you could only Perfect. see me in the video, dude. I was spitting. I made it look like I was spitting them on my nipples. No, I, you know, I'm glad I didn't have to see that, actually. And I'm sure all of them are, too. So <laughs> <laughs> If they're listening to this... On uh, CastBox, which is a uh, place where you can uh, listen to it on the audio only, and you don't have to download or watch the video while watching it, because I know how YouTube doesn't let you uh, watch a video unless you have uh, YouTube Red or whatever. So that's a good option. Uh, CastBox, it's an app you can get on uh, iOS or Android or whatever. Download it today. Save yourself a lot of money. Okay, so do you have the topic list on you? I actually don't. I'm sorry. My phone is in another room charging, so I'm ill prepared. Okay, that's fine. I'll read it out. Uh, these topic. Well, this one's kind of a follow up from last week. Uh, this uh, topic is number one is former employee sues Halltail Games. Uh, we'll get into the some uh, info on that one. Uh, second one, Fallout seventy six beta in the works. Uh, it's def- technically it's next week and. Uh, as a subtopic to it, crossplay is not happening. Um, number three is PS Plus Games of October 18th, which comes out today. Uh, number four is game releases of October. Number five is no PlayStation experience this coming year. Uh, number six is Blood Dragon comes to Far Cry 5, which is one of the games I really enjoyed back in the day. Uh, number seven is PlayStation 1 mini all right right. sounds like a good list to me all right joe do you know anything about the uh telltale thing that's going on with the suing well i'll tell you this i'm actually a little surprised because i think we both expected this but neither one of us actually said it last week we were just kind of talking about man this is a shame but somehow i think you and i might have been talking not on the recording at some point just like how are some of these employees going to react to this right and i think it's within reason that some people are thinking hey you you guys kind of screwed us up with your business model and that was my understanding of what was happening with this case now i don't have the uh, dollars and cents and the actual accusation in front of me so i'll let you go ahead and do that if you have it uh, dollars and cents I don't know of. I know that they're taking him to like a small uh, small claims court. Um, mm-hmm. The main reason is for because of uh, the Warren Act in the United States. You're supposed to be warned within uh, warned about being losing your job within 60 days. Uh, advance notice of the uh, like a plant or business for mass layoffs for employees. You have to have a 60 day warning. Um, the act was placed in 2001, I think it was. Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, it took place in 2001 where uh, like 2,000 layoffs uh, were, you know, fired. Um, almost like, let's see. Uh, here, I'll just read what this, what I got here. Specific requirements of worker adjustments and retraining notification act may be found in the act itself. Public law, da 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 Let's see what else. Um... Where's the actual? Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, the Warren Act is a federal uh, statute that requires companies with more than a hundred employees to give notice to affected employees of at least sixty days before plant closes of mass layoff. If an employer doesn't give notice, the affected employees may be entitled to recover sixty days worth of wages and benefits. So, the I know that the uh, Telltale did not give. Uh, severance pay. No, they did, and they didn't give anywhere near sixty days warning either. Right. It was literally just a few weeks, right? I don't even think it was that long. I, I think they. Uh, I mean, when they came out with the announcement to the public, they said we let everyone go today. But if I remember correctly, I don't even think they got two weeks. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. I uh, like most. I I would understand like two weeks would be like us 
turning in our two week notice to quit, right? But not right. a company the other way around. No. Um, I just think it really sucks that uh, that they miss. I don't know if they did it on purpose or they miss or they miss that type of law. It's like, I mean, I know it, it's a small group, right? It's a small group, of probably a little bit over a hundred employees. Um, maybe the owner or the the CEO just hey, I for, I forgot that we had more than a hundred employees and, and was hit with this uh, lawsuit. And so. It, Oh, go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just going to say that, like, I guess that's why the employees are like, you know what? Fuck this. Um, I'm going to be out of work for a while. I need at least 60 days worth of pay. And yeah, and they were paying attention to the law. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And I think I, I actually kind of agree with what you're saying. I was, I was going to go there myself. I don't think that they did it intentionally to try to screw anybody. I mean, let's face it. If you're the CEO of a failing business or a studio or whatever, it, some of these things – they should matter. They should be a priority, obviously, but they could slip your mind too. And you're right. Maybe they had one or two more employees than the minimum number for the, the, the act. And they just didn't even really realize, Oh crap, we're subject to this guideline. And now they're going to pay for it even more, which, you know, I mean, the employees deserve it, but it does kind of suck for ownership too, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it hurts both sides. That's for sure. Yeah, nobody's in a good position right there. That's, I mean, ha yeah. have you ever been through a situation like that before or to yourself? I mean, <laughs> what being laid off or, yeah, or just laid off without notice and Yeah. Was... Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the the territory that the company that I worked for supplied was definitely less than 100 employees, so they right. pretty much just came in and were like, "Yeah, we're going to part ways with you now they did give me they did approve unemployment i didn't get severance or anything but right. i at least got unemployment so i didn't get screwed that way but a little different situation for right. sure i'm just wondering like how, how would how would that tell how would unemployment work does it still come out of the company's pocket when it's uh unemployment or is that when it when government comes in I was gonna say it's taxes and government. Yeah, we, oh, okay. we all we all pay into unemployment on our our normal checks. Everybody pays towards it, right. so it's just an overall fund that goes, you know, uh, and you go into it to to pay out that unemployment to people once they go on it. So it would still look they would still look at whatever their salaries were while they were there. Usually they look at the last six quarters. Uh -huh. that you worked and what you earned during those quarters, four to six, so last year to year and a half basically. And then they take the quarter that you earned the most and then that sticks you into like a bracket. So if you earned like $15,000 from April till June of this year and that's your highest quarter, then that means you get a certain amount per week. Usually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, you know, that would be fine. And they should get approved for that if they weren't because layoffs are like one of the easiest things to get approved for because right. it's not anything you did. You know, the company just went under. Yep. All right. I guess that's pretty much it for that. I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit. Um, do you, do, well, I, I have a question for you just for to, on the topic. Do you think this is going to expand to something bigger? Like, do you think we're going to see class, class action lawsuits or anything else move from this or just this one individual saying, hey, you kind of owe all of us this and that's the end of it? I hope that's the end of it. I really do. But um, I know that uh, Netflix had something uh, lined up for uh, um, yeah, what was their TV show called? Uh, Strange, oh, wait, Strange, Stranger, Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, Stranger Things. Um, they were supposed to work on a game for that. And I'm oh, that's right. I'm wondering if that was under contract and they had to. Uh, I hope that's not a breach of contract or something, or and that doesn't lead up to something worse. You know what I mean? I completely forgot about that, dude. That's yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, I would hate to see that project get scrapped. I mean, I think it did. <laughs> well, I mean, not as far as what I've heard taken, so far. I th I was hoping somebody else would pick it up. I guess is what I meant to say, like that it would continue oh, okay. in a studio's name. That would be nice. I wonder who would pick it up then. Yeah. Right. You know, who's to say we'll come back to that. Hopefully, it's a topic for another show. You know. Yeah. Hopefully, it's the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, be like quicker. what? Damn! What? Tattoo's just monopolizing my uh my show and shit. Yeah. Just being on every episode, <laughs> fuckers. No, 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 Phil. We're just psychic. We're psychic. Oh, That's we're being psychic. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, next topic, you were talking about uh, um, Fallout 76 and the beta. Yes, sir. Stuff. Yep. Um, I don't know. Are you even interested in Fallout 76 in the online? So, uh, no. no. Uh, I know I'm going <laughs> to get a lot of hate from people listening, but that's one series. I'm more of an Elder Scrolls fan when it comes to Bethesda. I never really enjoyed the fallout series that much i played right. through three and new vegas and four just didn't interest me at all really and i just feel like they're putting so much effort into this particular franchise and it's like guys elder scrolls 6 has been in development for what how long and now we got not even really a teaser trailer it's just basically a landscape shot yeah. but um you know, I mean, the like, landscape was fucking awesome though oh yeah oh. it was yeah it was real fucking pretty countryside i'll tell you that man yeah. but I want to see what the game is and where it's actually taking place. Like, spread the love a little bit. But that that's just me bitching off topic. Right. Uh, you know, the, a lot of people are excited about this game, and that's really what matters. So with the beta coming out and starting in about a week, uh -huh. you know, a lot of people are going to have that opportunity to get a little bit of exposure to it and see how it feels firsthand. So that's, that's always a good thing, no matter what, even if I'm not excited for it myself. Really? You wouldn't – so would you try the beta? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, if somebody got me like a free access to it or something like that, like I don't know if you have to register or do any effort to to get I on. I think it's an, I think it's only a pre order thing. Yeah, I wouldn't. Then I wouldn't because I wouldn't be pre ordering it. Right. Mm. If I pre ordered it, I'd probably maybe game share with you, so you can yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Um, that. I would totally do that. Because I, I actually do want to get it. And I have a few other friends who want to jump on and, and play it. So why didn't you play um, Elder Scrolls Online then, if you were such an Elder Scrolls guy? Oh, that was such a terrible MMO. The format for it, formula was so bad. Uh, did you ever get a chance to try it out yourself or no? No, I never, I never tried it, even when I... it was on beta back in the day. Yeah, see, I did in the early stages, and I know everyone could say, well, it was early. Of course it wasn't good, but it didn't get much better once it actually launched officially. Right. And I saw recent content, even before the uh, Morrowind expansion, and the fact that they're still charging so little money for it is just a testament to the fact that they know it's not a good quality game that is yeah. deserving of a normal monthly subscription fee of, like, $15. Like, well, that's wow. free. That's what I'm saying. That's my yeah. point. Like. A free-to-play MMO is never a good sign of good production value or fun gameplay. Like it's right. just not usually. Right. Uh, so you know, to me, my first-hand experiences were not good. I liked the notion of what they were doing. Like, hey, this is Tamriel thousands of years before the other games you played. Like you can see how some of these things developed, but it didn't add anything new to the world lore yet and that's right. what we play those games for like i know you you read every book in those games because you're just like i want to understand the lore of this world that they've built yeah and elder scrolls online gave us nothing new to that really uh, At least so shattering. i didn't know that yeah it's just hey this is the warring world where like cyrodiil was still a battlefield and because it's in the middle of everything and all that right. you know whatever we all know how it turned out so unless this is going to give us some new perspective i don't really care right but anyway again <laughs> bethesda yes but we want to be on fallout so you're hyped about fallout yeah why i'm definitely um i just like fallout i like the i like the the guns the the creatures i just like all that shit that's i think it's one of the i think it's fun i mean besides elder scrolls yes i think um I think uh, Fallout has it, you know, that has that has that feeling of actual, you know, nuclear war. That that the uh, the atmosphere of uh, of the aftermath is like totally like I'm in it, I'm on it. You know what I mean? And I, okay. I I fear in real life, you know, that shit may happen. And if if we had to go into a vault, this is how it would end up. You know what I mean? So you're you're like I'm prepared for no, no I'm, <laughs> I'm not prepared. Far from it. Uh, probably be fucking ashes because there I don't know where any volts are. <laughs> <laughs> you have to build your own. That's why they have the app on your phone. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's practice, right there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious, no, dude. Yeah, uh, no, but for real, I, I I get where you're coming from. It's not like everything about it was terrible to me. I liked. Some of the designs and atmosphere, especially, they capture a lot of that well. But 
I guess it's just a personal preference at that point for me when it's a fantasy setting. I just like my medieval like nature outdoorsy swords and magic kind of feel right. versus guns and post-apocalyptic trash like heap of society. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, there's a good genre of storytelling there and a lot of things you can do with it. It's just not to my taste necessarily. Right. So no knocks on it. I mean, Bethesda is a phenomenal studio. Their work is always – pretty much universally great quality yeah but yeah i mean and you are far from the only one who's excited about that game coming trust me so i'm sure a lot of people are hyped for that beta and the other the other part about what you wanted to talk about with this is the cross play and yeah. that to me is something you and i've been talking about for decades well okay not decades but i mean for a long time <laughs> Yeah. We've been talking. We were so old, everybody. We predate the internet. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do, but uh, it, it's to me. I know that there's a competition. Okay, I get it. I get Sony, Microsoft. Everybody wants to have their piece of the pie and establish their own identity. But we're in an age where ninety percent of games are online. Some of them are online only. Like they don't yeah. even offer single player offline mode support anymore. So let's just start merging shit. Have your Sony servers. Have your Microsoft servers. I mean, fucking Final Fantasy XI did it back in 2004 on the PlayStation 2. The yep. PlayStation 2, you could play with PC and then eventually Xbox, the original Xbox. One. Right. That the game. So it's possible. It's just the producers have to have the server capacity to handle mixing the amount of players from all the different platforms. Right. But it's doable and i don't see why people are shying away from it so much but what, what were your thoughts on it um yeah i agree i agree that we need to get past all this uh you know uh big-headedness and and uh all this pride of being the best or whatever with sony um not i'm not saying that sony is the best but they are leading in consoles um yeah they need to just Fucking stop doing that because obviously people are gonna to want to play people with uh, on Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever uh, in crossplay, and this is just one step of why. Why is Fortnite the only one? Why is right? I mean, Final Fantasy was uh, Final Fantasy fourteen is crossplay with uh, PC. I mean, you've played. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely, um, man. Why can't other things like that? I mean, if they've done it before, why why being pick why why being so picky? Right. Well, I think here's why, at least I think this is why, and it's a really stupid reason if I'm right. They honestly believe by restricting the ability to play with different consoles, different platforms, that they're going to convince people to buy their console then. So like say you have Xbox, I have PlayStation, you're one of my best friends, we want to play games together. They think – both parties think that you're we're going to buy each other's console to play with each other and that's not how most gamers are. Yeah. A lot of gamers are very, very uh, loyal to their particular console for whatever reason or they're just not financially – you know, well off enough yeah. to do it, yeah. So you're screwing everybody because they're not going to buy your console, and then you're probably not even going to get the game sale anymore because if I can't play with Phil, then fuck it. I don't want to play it at all, and I'm not certainly not going to go buy an Xbox just to play with you. So, you know, yeah. to me, it's a, dumb, it's a dumb mindset to have if that's what's going on, and I think, yeah. I think that it is. Okay, so game exclusive, let's say Uncharted uh, 5 comes out. Yep. And uh, that's gonna be okay. So they're not Uncharted Five. Let's say, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, I can't believe I forgot the name of that game. Uh, damn, it's gonna be a part two. Last of Us Two. Uh -huh. um, that's gonna have multiplayer. So someone in Xbox really wants to play that game, but also wants to play with me. There is no crossplay with that. You know, so you're right. gonna have, you're gonna be forced to play that uh, to buy a new system anyway. Right. Um, but when it comes to Call of Duty, Battlefield, uh, and let's say Cyberpunk is online, uh, Cyberpunk uh, tw uh, 2077, that's going to be online. Yeah. Of course, that's that's going to be – hopefully all of those games become crossplay. No one's talked about Call of Duty yet. That's coming out next week. Why, why are we talking about uh, Fallout, which is in November? You know what I mean? No one's – I haven't heard anyone complain about Call of Duty being crossplay. It's, so far, it's only been uh, Bethesda because uh, – what's his name? 
I'm not sure. I don't Who's know. Who's the CEO, I don't know. CEO of uh, Bethesda? What's his name? Oh, crap. Um, damn it. I don't know off the top of my head. Shit. Hold on. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> it is Robert Altman. Robert Altman. No, it's not him. It's the other guy. That well, Zenimax is the parent company of Bethesda. My bad. <laughs> the other guy. Um, other other CEO. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> the other CEOs. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but he he was the one who uh is like pointing fingers at Sony. Like, hey, this is not our fault. We want crossplay. Um. God, what is his name? I think well, I've got I've got Chris Weaver as the founder. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um. I just pulled straight up pulled Wikipedia. Todd Vaughn. Todd, yeah. Pete Hines, Ron Pete Hines. Seeger. It was Pete Hines yeah, is the one uh, that was pointing the fingers. Okay. Well, that's because he's PR, so that yeah. makes sense. He's PR marketing, so yeah. He was like, "This is not my fault. This is this is all Sony's fault. We we want crossplay and this and that." And I'm surprised Activision or uh, who, who, and EA hasn't said anything about you know their games. Well, I think I think part of that's because – well, okay, there's one of two arguments there. The first is that their games are becoming less and less relevant, and I think that's a stupid thing for me to say, but in a way it is because Call of Duty games are the same damn formula every single time. You get one every year. They never change. The same people who want to buy them are buying them. No one new is really jumping in on them at this point. Right. So they're not they're not looking to change their formula, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like what's been working for them, they apparently think works well enough. Why reinvent the wheel? The other side of that is just the other part of what I just said. If they brought crossplay out, they're not necessarily increasing their game sales because the people who are buying the games are going to buy them on either system just as frequently. They're not going to necessarily buy it more commonly just because now they can play with the other system. Right. So I think that's part of the problem. Whereas something with Bethesda, their games are kind of – I don't want to say niche because that's not quite right. And they're definitely not exclusive. But right. they are the type of thing where like maybe I would get Fallout 76 on my PlayStation if I knew I could play with friends on another console. You right. know, And I had enough because a bunch of the people I know that are like super hyped about the game are big Xbox players. Right. And it'd be like, okay, I might consider it. Maybe if I had that kind of community, I can guarantee, you know, I would play with. Just as an example, mm -hmm. but that's not really the case with Call of Duty or even Battlefield. I feel like you've already got your crew by this point. You've already got your squad because it's been these games have been around for so long. You're playing with the people you play with on the consoles that you play with, and that's just kind of set in stone. Right. So that might be why they might think it might hurt their shells or something, or just not worth the effort. In my opinion, anyway. I agree. I agree with you on that. That makes sense. Cool. All right. Well, publish, publish <laughs> well, yeah. your studios. If you're listening, get get crossplay going. Get, yeah, Stop get me. it done. Um. All right. So beta comes out on the <laughs> Xbox One done. first on the 23rd of October. Um. And uh, for PC and PlayStation Four, comes out on the 30th. So if you wanted to, go ahead and do the your your uh, pre-order thing, which which I'm like up some arms with actually pre-ordering games i don't know what is your i uh, another subtopic uh what is your thoughts on pre-ordering games you do it right yeah i still do i uh i have soul caliber 6 on pre-order i have tales of Vesperia on pre-order i do it through gamestop most of the time sometimes i go straight through the publisher or even digitally but i kind of we talked about this last week I like the physical copies of things. I don't like digital because I can turn right. around and still sell the thing or let someone borrow it. Whereas digital, you pretty much have to game share and you can only really do that with one person consistently and you certainly can't resell it. So, right. you know, to me, I like to pre-order because I want to make sure I have a physical copy waiting for me that I can go at midnight to just snag up and start right. playing. Right. I see it should be. How about you though? Are you still doing pre-orders um, or no? I only do pre-orders for games that I for surely know that's going to be good. Like I'm not just going to pre-order it because I'm hoping that it's going to be good. I got yeah. to make sure it's like Battlefield. I'm kind of iffy on like pre-ordering um, because I'm not. I I enjoyed the beta. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, 
but I'm like about to flip a coin on it to see if I should reserve it or not. Because right now, oh dude, <laughs> right now Best Buy is doing the ten dollars uh, rewards um, for just pre-ordering it. So I might do that just to get ten bucks, dude. Just that's crazy that you say that because we must be getting old, dude. <laughs> I feel the same way as you. I'm like, unless this is something I've just been dying for and waiting right. for forever, or I've seen trailers and read reviews that just prove that it's going to be something good. Right. I haven't been spending my money pre-ordering or buying a lot of these games. Like right. Battlefield Five, I told you, I might, I might skip. I, yep. I really might. And I mean, it's not because I don't want a good shooter or that it wouldn't be good. Because I'm sure it is. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't have time to dump so many hours a day into video games the way I used to when I was younger and I have a couple things that I'm already playing and it's like what's got to what's not going to make the cut basically right, you know right yeah and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about the game releases in October <laughs> yeah well we got, one, we got one on that list I'm definitely <laughs> that's, kidding that's okay <laughs> alright let's move on let's move on we're getting we're, right. get, we're branching off too far uh, right. PlayStation Plus games of October 2018 um have you seen any of the games on the list or no? No. So since I was prepping for that interview, I haven't really been on my PlayStation the last two days. Okay. So I hadn't seen what was loaded. Came out today. Final uh, – what is it? Uh, Friday the 13th. That okay. makes sense, right? It's yep, Halloween. Yep, it's Halloween. October. Yep. <laughs> Laser League, which is um, just like a uh, – uh, what's it called? What the fucking movie is called? Um uh, like a rail shooter? No, it's not a rail shooter at all. It's a, uh, it's a fuck. What was that movie called? It was, uh, it was made by Disney. Um, it reminds me of dang. What's that movie called? Uh, I'm pulling it up on my PlayStation right now. It's actually a pretty cool looking game. It's it's multiplayer. Um, I'm not sure how many people, but it looks like maybe four at a time, and you're using these. Uh, different types of weapons that look like um 80s style lights and stuff like that it looks pretty cool what is it called you're what? talking about the free games for playstation plus in october yeah all right laser league looks a bit like um the the robot uh freaking well hold up it looks like tron, tron. kind of that's what i was trying to say yeah the whole time i was trying to figure out the name <laughs> Yeah, it looks like Tron. It has the feeling of Tron and, like, maybe weapons that are kind of act like Tron. Uh, okay. It's pretty cool. I, I think I might I might jump on that just to see how that looks. I um, am looking at it right now myself, actually. What else came out on uh, PlayStation Plus? Oh, uh, 20, 2064 read-only memories. I'm looking at the list here. Yeah, the uh, PS3 game. Um, if you still have your PlayStation 3 hooked up, this uh, this one's called Master Reboot. Um, I don't know much about it, but it looks interesting. Uh, this one's a cross-buy, PlayStation 3 and <laughs> PlayStation 4. It's called The Bridge. Don't know anything about that. I'm looking at it right now, though, reading through the story. 48 oh. thought-provoking puzzles. It's a 2D logic puzzle game that forces the player to reevaluate their preconceptions of physics and perspective. Ooh. Could be interesting. You know uh, what? I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download that right now while we're talking. What the hell? <laughs> it's not? free, so what yeah. the heck? Yeah, why not? Um, another cross by Vita and PS4, Rocket Birds 2 Evolution. I am down for that. I am <laughs> so down for that. Rock Birds, uh, I played the first one on the PlayStation 3, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, it's a side-scrolling shooter, uh, twin-stick shooter, basically, uh, kind of like Contra and all. And uh, <laughs> you're a fucking chicken, shooting guns at, uh, I forget, I forget, it's like a, a Bad Guy Pigs, I think it is. I forget it was. Uh, but you're like, you're, you're flying, you got a rocket uh, jack, uh, jet pack on your back, and you're flying around shooting shit. It's fun. Uh, mindless shooting, you know what I mean? I'll probably yeah, yeah. I'll probably stream that. I actually I might be streaming that today. Um, that, like you said, it's good if you're gonna just sit down for thirty minutes and screw off for a little bit. Exactly. By the way, really quick, jumping back to Laser League, it's uh, one to four players offline, two to six on network. Oh, okay. Just because you had mentioned the multiplayer, but you weren't sure, I just wanted to pull it up real quick and see. Right on. Um, okay, so the other one is 2064 Read Only Memories. What's that about? It is 
got to pull the details screen up real quick. So I never. Uh, really... It's set in Neo San Francisco in 2064, the year. Uh, your life as a struggling journalist is interrupted by the world's first sapient machine, a ROM named Turing. Together, you and the quirky robot will encounter a colorful cast of locals and overcome challenges as you uncover the city's secrets behind the overlapping futures of technology and humanity. So it's kind of sounds like a post-apocalyptic, like an iRobot almost. Right. Oh, okay, cool. And that is it. Out of this list, I don't know if I'm going to do Friday the 13th. Nah, nah I'd skip uh, that. But League, Laser League, I'm going to do. Uh, I'll look at the bridge and I'll look at the read-only memories, but definitely Rocket Bird. Yeah, those are the two this month I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely download. Yeah, um, I downloaded Bridge while we were talking, and I gotta admit I'm actually kind of interested in it. Really? I mean, yeah, it kind of almost the way to make it sound is it's almost like a a portal in terms of like the puzzles that involve mind-blowing physics or changing your perception of things and then solving a puzzle to get through it okay. so if it's if it's the kind of a logic thinking you know challenging kind of game that could be a good time i'm downloading laser league right now too but i, I don't know that i would actually play it, it it's enough interesting I mean, to work we'll, we'll for free let's play it together then if if it's gonna make us play it if you're gonna download it all right all right i'll download it later uh we'll, and we'll play later Okay, sounds like a plan. Cool. Uh, all right, so let's move on. That is it for PlayStation Plus. Next one's game releases. A huge list. A huge list. Yeah. Not, not just PlayStation, but uh, the Switch, PC, Xbox One, and all that. Uh, let's start off with, uh, by date, October 2nd, there's three games. Uh, Forza Horizon for for xbox and pc uh fist of the north star lost paradise yeah, that's a uh, great fucking classic anime by the way really uh, oh yeah have you, have you never seen it i've heard of it but i never played it or uh, watched it i mean oh wow dude uh check, mega, check that out i will i'll do it uh mega man 11 yes that's today yes yeah. second yeah oh crap yep um okay so two games on the 5th of october 5th assassin's creed odyssey playstation 4 xbox one pc uh super mario party on the switch uh let's see two games for the 9th of october disgaea one complete on the playstation 4 and switch wwe 2k19 for everything uh, for everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the PS4, Xbox, Switch, <laughs> PC. That's everything. That's not 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 for your Super Nintendo. Okay, that's not what I meant by everything. Uh, two games for the twelfth: Call of Duty, Black Ops Four, uh, everything. <laughs> the world ends with you. Final mix. Yes. Really? Yeah. Tell me about that. Switch. Oh, uh, so that's gonna be on what day? The thirteenth. Twelfth. Twelfth. So, Twooey, The World Ends With You, is from the 3DS. It's 10 years old now. I was playing that game right before I moved out here to Pennsylvania, actually. I had it with me on the flight, finishing off some of the crazy, like, endgame stuff. Very, very cool storyline, especially for its time, what it was. I've seen its premise kind of redone a few times since in different, like, anime or video games. But the long and short of it is you play as a kid named Neku who is a, I think, 15 or 16-year-old teenager, um, and he dies. At the start of the game, he gets killed. He's, like, tagging a freaking alleyway because that's what he does, uh -huh. and he gets, he gets murdered, and he gets placed into a Reaper's game where uh, his soul, over the course of a week, he has the opportunity to win a chance at coming back to life. And he gets partnered up with a girl named Shiki because they partner up all the people who died around the same time and say, okay, oh, you guys are pairs, go fucking win. And if you do, you get to come back. And it just – it gets nuts, dude. Some of the, the craziness that goes on and uh, how deep some of the game and its components are and the Reapers themselves, all of it's pretty cool. So right. pretty excited about that. I don't know how it's going to translate from 3DS to the Switch because – Okay, whole, what's, what's, what's the gameplay like? That's what I was about to say. So the combat, it's like an RPG, but you would use the stylus on the screen to swipe directions for attacks and things like that. So I don't know how that's going to work on the Switch with the Joy-Cons unless maybe it's motion. I don't know. I haven't read up on it. So Well, isn't the screen touchscreen? 
yeah, but how would you play it docked then on your TV? That's like forcing you to play it as a tablet, and I don't think they would do that. Uh, well, yeah, it's motion. That's got to be motion. <sighs> Throw your controller at the screen, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you had like these little pins, though, and basically the pins would do like different things. Like, you know, say you had like a fireball pin, you would swipe at an angle and the ball would fire that way. Or if you had like a slashing one, you would have to do an arc with the stylus to do like a sword swipe with it or whatever. Oh. And, and it was pretty cool. Again, especially for its time, it was really interesting, but it used both both screens. The top half of the screen was your partner, and they were controlled by like a, well, they're mostly controlled by AI, but you did like some little things to influence their attacks. But the bottom screen was you, and that's again, how are they going to do like two screens split? Like I don't know how that's going to look, or right. what, if they just did away with that completely in exchange for something else. So, uh, but I am excited. There's apparently going to be new story content added to the end of the game in particular because that's where stuff got real convoluted and. and pretty crazy originally uh-huh. and I think they're adding even more content to like really just kind of fill it in and make it feel better and give us some new stuff so anybody who didn't get a chance to play that back in the day very good square enix game very good it's kind of like their classic level of storytelling from the earlier final fantasies that a lot of us love um so check it out so it's, it's worth your time hell yeah hell yeah all right so where were we uh okay so i was uh the 16th has one two three games coming out uh mm-hmm. lego dc super villains for everything uh starlink battle for the atlas playstation 4 xbox switch uh warriors uh or uh four for ps4 playstation uh playstation 4 xbox switch and pc and uh that's it for that let's see on the 18th is cyberia 3 for the switch uh then uh the 19 i don't know if you might be getting this or not but <laughs> dark dark souls remastered switch um and then so caliber as well for basically almost everything except for the switch so yep. caliber baby is on the 19th uh, uh man i can't wait for that just Dance 2019 PS4 Xbox One and Switch for the October 23rd. My Hero Ones uh, Justice PS4 and Switch on the 26th, and as well on the 26th is Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh wait, so My Hero Academia uh, Ones Justice comes out on the 26th? Yes, sir. Ooh, Switch and PS4. Am a, I'm an enormous fan of that show. Enormous fan of that TV show. Really. And- yeah, I don't know if the game's going to be like your classic anime, just beat 'em up type fighting game, which, you know, they're fun, but, you know, not really all that worth the money a lot of the time. Okay. I'll have to look I'll have to look and see if there's more to it than what this like I remember remembering like the Bleach and the Naruto and the One Piece games in particular uh-huh. all kind of felt, kind of felt like all right, you know, it's cool to see your characters play as them, do all the special attacks and all that, but if it's just kind of like a run around beat em up, right. I might skip it. But man, that series is so good and so full of heart that if they make a story mode with it that's any fun, it would probably be worth picking up. Huh. Damn, out of all of these games, let's see. Which one I'm going to get? I don't even, how much is Mega Man 10? I mean, 11. Hmm. <sighs> and I. Out, and that's love... out today. Can you find Mike, man. You get you got are you on your PlayStation still? Sure am. F- find yeah, out I'm how sure. much that is. See if that uh, right now. Assassin's Creed. I don't know. I thought about it for like ten seconds. Uh who else? Yeah, I'm oh. skip I'm skipping Assassin's Creed hundred percent. I don't I don't care. Yeah. I haven't, uh, I haven't played one since Black Flag. Mega Man eleven is twenty nine ninety nine. That yeah. Feels a little expensive. Yeah, to me. I was hoping for twenty. I was hoping I, for twenty. I, I would love playing it, but yeah, it's that's too much how, to pay. How for. much was uh, Mega Man Ten? Wasn't that ten dollars? Um, uh, after a little while, I think it released at nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, on the PS three, right? Yep, I picked it up for nine ninety nine though. I had nine and ten. Right, that's see. why I would like to play. 11 because eventually for those of you who 
follow the lore of the series, eventually they're going to have to tie those original games to the Mega Man X series. Like right. we're going to have to see Dr. Wily and Dr. Light die and Mega Man go into his like upgrade hibernation or whatever. Right. Like it's going to have to happen or proof that X is his own individual person. Like that the Mega Man in the originals dies and X was a different like creation altogether. Oh, I don't shit. Know. But I want to see what what is going on. Oh, my PS4 froze. That sucks. Oops. Um, Dark... Damn it! You broke it. I think it was going to be Soul Calibur Six and maybe Red Dead Redemption. I haven't played the first Red Dead, um, and people keep on getting on me with it for that. So I might I might even just play the first one before buying the second one. Um, just at the moment, I'm probably not going to buy it. So that's going to wait. Because in November there's there's uh what was it Battlefield comes out I might pick that up, Fallout comes out in November I might pick that up too. So that when when they say broke October or broke October, that's true. It's yeah, true. It is. and it's been like that for years. They need to start spreading these fucking games apart a little bit more. Man, I like there are not too many games come out in September. Not too many comes uh, games come out in August. What about those fucking the, summer is the perfect time for games that should come out. Kids come out. Yeah, they're not even in kids. school. Then, like, I guess, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's a dry spell during the summer, and I've been like, damn, I want a new game. And then when fucking October comes out, it's like seventeen, yeah. and they do that for the holidays. I mean, I get it to a degree, but you're right. They need to spread some of these bigger titles out throughout the year. Yeah, I mean. Guys like me are lucky because your JRPGs and kind of those off the wall titles are the ones that usually come out throughout the year. Yeah. So I have stuff that keeps me busy, but the average gamer that follows a lot of like you were saying the AAA like big releases and stuff, it's like yeah. you know feast or famine. You get like ten all at once, and you just gotta hope they last you until the next big wave comes out. Right. That's messed up, man. I, I mean I can I can kind of see the people who are like who love Call of Duty and Battlefield at the same time and they get both games within just a few weeks of each other. That's kind of like get burnt out first person games. You got to yeah. get burnt out. I don't know how all these. I just at my age I guess I I can understand that I can get burned out on on first person shooter games and oh it, yeah it, it takes a lot of it takes for me it used to be I'd be able to bam get into it and just wipe the floor of everyone nowadays I need at least like thirty minute warm up of playing the game just 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 to get good again like I used to you know I I know what you mean I know exactly what you mean actually and I don't think I don't think it's necessarily age I mean part of it might be age and reflexes but think about when we used to go hard on like Battlefield three and four especially yeah. We had our squad, but we were ready to go. Like the nights where we'd be like, "All right, pick up a case of beer, and uh, we're both gonna have our own case at our own house. We're gonna <laughs> spread it, Joanna, and all them, and we're just gonna go deep until like four in the morning, because that was how we enjoyed spending our time back then." Yeah. But now, now it's like, okay, you know, girlfriend or this particular TV show or this game that's got a story that I want. Like, there's other things yeah. taking our time up that it's like, shit, I don't want to just sit down and invest all this energy into staying sharp with the shooter game. Right. And I think that's more what it is. Like, if we dedicate energy, I'm sure we're still just as good as we were, but yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah, dedicate okay. energy. Yeah, I agree so, with you. But, yeah, those, those are the releases for October, and we're going to – are we going into November as well, or are we just going to – No, we're just doing uh, – we'll, we'll do uh, November when uh, – the first week of November. Okay, that's what I figured. But, yeah, lots coming this month. Three oh, games. Yeah. So when I said I said at the beginning, oh, there's one I you, you know for sure I'm going to get. I meant Soul Calibur Six. Yep. I didn't even think about uh, The World Ends With You or My Hero. So, yeah. I mean, that, that right there just goes to show you. It's caught me off guard. <laughs> I mean, Mega Man 11 was kind of a surprise. I didn't know it was going to come out on the second, let alone today. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't realize it was going to be so damn expensive. <laughs> yeah, man, it should be twenty dollars. It should be twenty dollars, not thirty dollars. I mean, it'll, it'll drop. Better be fast. a lo- it better be a long game. It's not, and that's just it. It's going to be the same format as it's always been. So uh, that's why I'm going to wait. It'll drop. It'll become one of these PlayStation Plus titles. You know, in the future, I'll just grab it then. Ooh, you think so? Yeah, I know so because nine and ten had their super discounted sales at some point. So, okay. and if if they're going to try and keep it that expensive, for t- they're never going to sell enough. They're going to have to move units, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. but anyway, 
That's just my opinion on it. All right, let's move on to number five. No PlayStation experience. I am kind of bummed out. Are you? Yeah. They're not going to show anything. How come? What's wrong, man? Because I always take that day off from work. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm serious, though, man. I've I've always taken uh, PlayStation uh, experience uh, that day off, as well as... uh, their conference on uh, E3. I've always taken those days off. I'm like, just to chill and watch it. I don't want to okay. wait to take it off work and I'm looking on my phone and I'm like half ass looking at trailers and shit. Nah, man, I want to I want chill and watch and have a couple of beers and watch what they got coming, you know? Okay. No, I can respect that. So let me ask you this question then because this might be the thing that's lingering on everyone's mind. What do you think this means for Sony? Why cancel it? Do you think there's like a hidden... Uh, budget, money, financial reason? Do you think it's a, a publicity move? Do you just think they don't really care? I don't think it's a money thing. Um, I don't think it's that they don't care either. I think it's yeah, it's a it's a marketing move. Um, they're gonna they're gonna hold off on uh, showing stuff because they already have the PlayStation Five set up. Hmm, that's what you're thinking, huh? I'm, that's I'm the think, move. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking uh, 2018, was it? No, 19, and they're not supposed to have it. T- uh, 2020 is when they announced the PlayStation 5. Okay. That's what I think. And they're going to have uh, trailers and games and ideas and stuff like that. And, um, you got the PlayStation Experience 2020. That's what Interesting. I that would be – I mean I hope you're right. That would be pretty freaking cool for that close. I say that close even though the PS4 has been out for five years now. You know yeah. what I mean? That's usually – when you think of console life cycles, it's you know, five to seven years and the next one's coming out. But because of how they did this, this time around where they kind of just created 4K improvements of what was already out, I thought they were going to try to stretch this console generation out a little longer than normal. Right. You know? Right. So if you're right about that – That'd be pretty cool, man. Well, I actually they, wouldn't mind that. They actually just announced a price drop for the PlayStation Pro in Japan. To what? Um, I didn't. I didn't see how much. Here, let me look it up real quick. Yeah, I'm curious because that might reflect what we get here. And if that's the case, then yeah, there's almost no way they're not getting ready to roll something else out. Three forty nine ninety nine instead of four hundred. Wow. I mean, for a 4K console that does all the shit that it does, that's a hell of a good price. Yeah. You got to think. Well, cool. I mean, that is that is usually a sign then that we're on the cusp of a new – at least development has gone pretty far along, if nothing else, you know? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're quickly approaching the holiday shopping season, which means blah. Uh, Black Friday is nearly upon us. We can probably expect to see plenty of gaming discounts. Um, do you know the yen convergence? Um, roughly a thousand yen or ten thousand yen is a buck, I think. Roughly or t- uh, a thousand yen is a buck. I always forget. I think it's a thousand is a dollar, roughly close to that. You hear? Uh, okay, so yeah. Um, Why? What were you looking at that you were curious about, or whatever? Well, it's telling me from forty-four thousand nine hundred eighty yen to thirty-nine thousand nine hundred eighty yen. Uh, it's a reduction of five thousand yen. Okay, so about fifty bucks. Which means it's uh, it's around fifty bucks. Yeah, forty-three dollars, mm-hmm. and it isn't the biggest price butt cut. Uh, but it's uh, yeah. Basically, it's fifty dollars. Yep, three forty nine. Yep, that is exactly what it is. That would be nice. I don't know if I'd buy it though. Honestly, would you buy a PlayStation Pro? I have a Pro already. Yeah, absolutely. When did you? When did you uh, switch over? And pretty much as soon as they came out because I really? had the 4K TV already. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. And it makes a huge difference. Really? If, you're, if your TV is HDR capable, uh-huh. oh, oh, my God. Things like Witcher 3 and Final Fantasy 15 in particular are just so much, so much better on, on the Pro. And and um, 
just quality of processing, like how it runs much, uh-huh. much more smoothly and everything else. Yeah, dude, it's it's 100% worth it. I'm very happy with it. Now, yeah. that being said, if you don't have a 4K TV, obviously, I that's do. a lot. Uh, well, then, yeah, you should be taking advantage, bro, especially if there's going to be a price drop. Yeah, treat yourself to that. Now, I, I'll be honest. I found a private – like I sold my old one privately and got 200 bucks for it. So, I mean, I, I made up almost half of the cost at the time right. you know, to replace it. So, to me, it wasn't like I had to spend a whole lot of money to get the upgrade. So, I could see somebody being a little bit more you know, reserved about it if they maybe – didn't have more than like a hundred bucks to spend and didn't think it was worth it. I get that. Like, no judgment, right. but if you have it, then fuck yeah, dude, absolutely worth your money. Hmm. I'll have to think about it because what, we're only a year, what, just a year and a half, maybe more to find out if there's a PlayStation fire or not. Well, know. yeah, I guess that's another thing to consider too, but I, you know, I don't want to go against you here on your theory but I don't know that they're going to be announcing a PS5 in the next year or two because it would hurt their sales too much. I mean, to update the technology for them to spend money to make the PS Pro uh-huh. versus what they already put into a PS4 is pretty minimal from what I understand. It's not a big change in cost for them. So they're making money on those finally, and I don't see them just cutting that short to be like, all right, because consoles are almost always a loss of money for the developer anyway. Right. You know, they, they make their money on the games. So if they're finally starting to see benefit of the PS4 console sales at all, I don't see them throwing that away anytime right. soon. But that's just me. I could be totally wrong about that. Right. Hmm. I'm trying to remember but, if I uh, if I bought the PlayStation Three on day one. I don't remember if I did. Uh you did not because we oh. both got ours right after. Like yeah. I got my 60 gig fat one not long after it came out yeah. from the GameStop that we were working at at that right. point. <laughs> Another topic we should talk about. <laughs> uh, that could be a show in and of Let's, itself. Yeah, me. it should be. Oh, we should do that. You want to do that? Like, Hell yeah. I remember John, Chris. I still have John on my Facebook. Oh, Josh, right? too, I think. Yeah, Josh, uh, he's married. Got his yellow fever settled. <laughs> yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, I've always remembered him dating so, uh, someone who was Asian or whatever. Yeah, he still. He still, still has was. his dog? Uh, I don't know about that, actually. His golden retriever. Fun. Yeah, he had a golden retriever. Was an awesome dog. She was yeah. awesome. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on from. Um, <laughs> from from the uh, PlayStation uh, experience sadness. Yeah. Um, Blood Dragon comes to Far Cry 5's arcade. I don't know. You never played a Far Cry uh, game, have you? I I have played them, but I have not played five. Oh okay. Oh man, you should try five. Five is fun, man. Five was a trip. It was like well, one tell of those... tell me and all of us about it. Um. It's not a relatively difficult game to beat. It does take a bit as far as um, as far as side quest goes, there's not really that many to do. Okay. Um, I would have to say just forget the side quest and go straight to the main story and just beat the shit out of it. The huh. the I think the most addicting parts about it is the like attacking the bases and trying to take it over. Um, okay. Being able to t- attack these bases in different ways, so specifically like doing it stealthily. You get more cash when you do it stealthy and no one catches you. Um, okay. And that could be a challenge because there's there's so many bad guys in uh, in the, in this base that you have to go around, find the best ways to sneak around and kill each one silently, stealthily, uh, without setting off alarms is probably the most uh, challenging about the game. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. You can just go gun ho and just destroy every one of rockets, snipers, whatever way you want to do it. Um, Story wise, is pretty it's pretty damn good. Uh, each boss has their own uh, region area, and each boss has their own kind of uh, uh, story to tell. Um, they're all on fucking drugs, bro. <laughs> and, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all on this crazy uh, – I forget what the drug was called, but the it's this plant that they're growing in this uh, – in, in 
the whole map where it's like these flowers just eliminate uh, like these gases around you. And it's even just being near the plant gets you all drugged up and gives you this psychedelic slow motion, tingly, uh, starry look uh, to your vision. And you're slow in the movement. It kind of helps you aim and shoot faster and stuff like that. Um, oh, wow. That's crazy. The game itself, <clears throat> I think, is fun because the guns. The guns are fun. Uh, you fly helicopter, plane, whatever. So it's it's. I think I would if I had to give it a score, I'd give it like a good solid eight out of ten. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that uh, that impressive then, huh? De- definitely better than the uh, um, the one before. Okay, definitely better than four and three. I think. Um, oh, that's good to know. I don't know if you ever played Blood Dragon. Blood Dragon was a. Uh, a DLC for three, and that no, was, I did not actually. It's a trip. It's Tron style eighties music, uh, fucking action pack one liner um, kind of game, you know. Um, and they put it in their uh, in their uh, Far Cry 5's arcade. Their arcade mode is like where you could play different uh, games, where you can develop, actually make your own maps. Uh, stuff like that, and uh, I guess they implement it into that. And I uh, think I'm gonna update my uh, my Far Cry Five just for that. Nice, do it, man. Um, <coughs> you don't really have much about talking about because you're not much of a Far Cry fan, as much as I am. Well, no, no, no. But I mean, our our viewers are. So I mean, yeah. you know, I've shared information on uh, on things like you know, World Ends with You and stuff. I I'm always fascinated hearing about new things, and I'm right. sure I would hope they are too. You know. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, let's see what you think. The PlayStation 1 Mini. Mm-hmm. Are you going to get it? So <laughs> I uh, I am torn, man. And I, and here – so you know me. You, like, you know me pretty well. And I would even imagine after only being on the show a couple episodes – Anybody that's listened a few times probably has an idea. I'm a friggin' nerd, man. I love my JRPGs, right? And Final yeah. Fantasy VII in particular is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, you know, altogether. But why the hell are they shipping the PlayStation 1 Classic with it? At this point, we can Everyone's get that game. Mm-hmm. We can get this game everywhere. It's on mobile. It's on PS4. It's on PC. Like, you can literally get this thing anywhere no love for ff8 though eight's not anywhere to be found and i mean i don't know just the the lineup well i'll let you go into the lineup but i just yes there's some stuff on it obviously these classic systems coming back it's cool it's really cool i don't have any of them though and there's a, a reason why because when it comes for nostalgia for me it's the music if I'm going to really just want to go back to a time when I was playing Mario Kart, I'll fucking pop on the Rainbow Road music on YouTube. And it's, <laughs> it's the same kind of feeling. Playing it just doesn't feel good anymore, though. Not to me. Like, those games you play for, like, 15 minutes and it's just boring. I right. uh, I, pl- I played it at uh, my buddy Jeff's house. He has the uh, N- uh, wow NES and uh, SNES Classic. And we played for maybe an hour, like Mario 3, Tecmo Bowl, like all that Nintendo classics, and every one of them got boring after a few minutes. I'm just like, you know, I know this is what we grew up on, and it was amazing back then, but it just doesn't hold my interest anymore. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, I want to get it just to be there on my desk. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so small, and, and it's... Uh, I I don't like using this word so much, but it's fucking cute. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 cute. I like it. It's small. I'm just disappointed that it didn't come with the um, dual sticks. It's just the original original controllers. Controller, yeah. Um, and yeah, that thing looks that thing looks fucking awesome. That little fucker. Um, Listen, there's nothing wrong with things being cute. Okay, you <laughs> say that word. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> the, the, but I don't want to. <laughs> the game lineup, yes, of course, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already been in everything. I'm sure you can even play it on a fucking Game Boy now. Um, 
Jumping Flash, never played it. Oh, me either. Uh, Ridge Racer Type 4. Now, that, me and Simon Good played yeah. religiously. We played yeah. that so much. And I then um, that became addicting. The music was fucking awesome. I even have it on my Spotify playlist. Nice. Um, Tekken 3. Of course, me and Simon played a shitload of that. Yep. And uh, Wild Arms. Wild Arms, I never played. Wild Arms is a good RPG. Um, I played the first three of them. There's five, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, yeah I that's can't remember. It. That's yeah. it. That's all they Pretty announced. small selection. Pretty small selection so far. I can't imagine they're going to only re- you know release with only five. That would be ridiculous. They, they Yeah, they announced only five and the other 15 pending. It's okay, to be good. Enough. It's supposed to be twenty. All right, all right, all right. That's what I thought, but I, for some reason, I didn't remember if I saw that somewhere. If I was just thinking because the others had twenty, that that was gonna have twenty. But all right, good. Because if they only did five or even ten, then mm-hmm. f- hell no, would I not even consider yeah. buying at that point? That's like a hundred dollars, isn't it? And they chose a hundred dollars for this uh, for to release. Yeah, yeah. That's so, kind of pricey compared to what uh, Nintendo has been doing. Yeah. So if the twenty games that are on it, you know, of the five that they released. I could not give a shit about at least two of them. Yeah. I I played FF7 to death and uh Jumping well, Flash. <laughs> yeah, Jumping Flash, that's right. Uh, what the hell? Who gives I, a I shit? Don't know, but, I don't know what anything about it. Yeah, I never yeah, played man. it. Never got around. But but Tekken's dope. Tekken yep. 3 is real freaking good. That might be the best in the series, in my opinion. Really? Well, I mean, not graphically, obviously, but I think the uh, fundamentals with how they, they br- incorporated things, the blocking and, and movement just felt yeah. fluid in oh, that okay. game. You know, the fight mechanics felt good. I don't think they really brought much more to it since then, if you really think about it. You know? I think I think the move list increased, of course. The move list definitely um, got more deeper and extensive when it came out to, like, the 4 and the 5, and then Tekken Tag 2, or Tekken Tag and then Tekken Tag 2, and and six and so on and so forth um true but do you think those things actually really changed the whole dynamic of how the game is played like reinvented it in any way or they, just, they no? did added walls or whatever in uh four or five i think it was five either five man when did they put walls i think it was in five when you could actually throw a person into the wall and stuff like that yeah um I think it was five, but I'm not sure. Um, but honestly, I think uh, and Simon and I would probably both agree that Tekken Tag one, or is it the second one, is the best one out of all of them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at the time, Tekken 3 was the best fighting game, in my opinion. I didn't wasn't a big fan of uh, Street Fighter or Virtual Fighter or... Um, um, like S Capcom and SNK and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we just liked because of the characters, you know, they, they yep. had lookalikes of Jackie Chan, lookalikes of yep. Bruce Lee, which Law and fucking yeah. <laughs> so we mean the Simon grew up on watching martial arts movies uh, with those characters, and, and that's I guess that's what made us like Tekken more than than most of other fighting games. Don't get us wrong, we could still fight you in any game. <laughs> yeah. they're but not I, lying he's not making that up either i promise you that much uh, I, I give you a run for your money in soul caliber a few times but yeah you and can... you will again yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely uh, buying it i'm buying it with you man and i'm gonna no, buy it i'm gonna buy it online because me and my brother uh, uh share games we share accounts or whatever mm-hmm. and um yeah, that was supposed to be a surprise, but I guess he found out right now. If he's listening, uh, he's gonna be li- he's gonna be listening to this podcast yeah. most likely. So yay! Guess what, Simon? I'm buying I'm buying Soul Calibur Six because you bought Tekken. Uh, what was the recent most Tekken? The most recent Tekken. Yeah. Tekken Seven. That. Yeah, you got you got seven. I'll get six of uh, Soul Calibur. So there you go, there you bro. Go. <laughs> Just kind of tying on what you said, uh, back in the day, I Soul Calibur and Tekken are and were the best games, fighting games in my opinion, for the same reasons. Like you said, the characterization yeah. and stuff is just what it's about. I think the characters in Tekken were cool. Like, freaking Eddie was <laughs> my guy. <laughs> but Eddie the, Gordo, we, really? Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, man. We, me and Simon worked and trained just to kick his ass. I bet. 
I, um, I, I did, I've never knew like who, who, what actor portrayed him. Nobody, I don't think. I, I don't think, think so either. A... Yeah, I think it was just an extra character, not like uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, King, King Law, Fang. Yeah, there's what was uh the blade looking guy? I forget his name. Oh crap! I, forget, I don't remember. But either. yeah, that's Wesley Snipes. You know. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Um, but yeah, I think that game Tekken series is better for its characters and the Soul Calibers for the weapons. Right. That's what I've always felt. Dude, Yoshimitsu keeps like getting on both. How the hell is yeah. he doing that? Because he's that awesome. <laughs> he's like, I'm a demon ninja. Hello. He's a cool character. I like him. Yeah, he is actually, and uh, I don't know if you caught it in the six character trailer that I posted. If you watched the whole way through, but he he looks like he's gonna be freaking dope in six. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I saw I saw some screenshots here and there. No Yun Sung, man. That's it. No, he's not I, there again. Ivy, you know I always go for Ivy. Uh huh. I know why you freaking sicko. Hey, I want to distract you <laughs> with, with, the, <laughs> with them huge ass titties, and yeah, it works <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I'll be like, "Hey, Joe, look at them tits," <laughs> and you're gonna be like, "Huh?" And I get a combo off. <laughs> like, thank God you're not an actual woman. I know, right? Oh my God, that'd be like, I don't know what the hell that would be. Scary. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. Well, that I think wraps up the list. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. I mean, I thought that the 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 list the, the wow I can't even talk the game releases uh-huh. for October definitely shocking. Uh, I did not realize there was that much coming. So lots for everybody on there in particular. That was probably my favorite thing that we broke into today. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I guess that's it for us, bro. I'm been. I think uh, this was a good episode. Uh, hopefully, we'll do some more again, uh, either Monday or Tuesday or whatever we can figure out for next week. All right, man. Well, I'll tell you this: they're always fun. Every episode's a good episode with you, bud. Okay. And uh, hopefully, everybody listening feels the same way. But as always, don't forget to let us know down in the comments section what you'd like to hear us talk about. If you guys have any preferences, we're always open to suggestions. Otherwise, we're just kind of going with what we feel. So thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. This is Leo Amantis signing out.